Is it possible to break into the growing field of artificial intelligence without having to write any code? Yes. Right now, there are open roles that involve working at the intersection of the technical and the business side of artificial intelligence, and you can get job offers, can get hired for those roles. And today, I'm going to show you the top three things that you need to master if you want to make this career transition from IT, from where you are right now, and get hired in artificial intelligence without having to be on these coding roles. So the first thing that you need to master is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is extremely important for a variety of reasons. First of all, that is your personal brand. LinkedIn, you have a headline, you have a profile photo, you have a story, as the summary section is your story, what makes you different from other people. You can actually convey your individuality, you can add value to your network, you can post interesting things, you can comment on other people's posts and things like that. So. The networking aspect of LinkedIn is extremely powerful, but also positioning for you to be to be seen as an expert, as a competent expert in your field within AI, even if you haven't worked there before, as long as you are developing that competence actively and training yourself. But even more importantly than anything else, for the purposes of getting hired in artificial intelligence, getting the job offer, is using LinkedIn for referrals. Yes. You, you could apply online, right? You can find a job opening for, let's say, machine learning product manager. That's one of those roles that work at the intersection of technical and business and do not involve coding. So you can find the job opening and you can submit your resume and hope, wait to hear back from HR. But what happens most of the time? You never hear from them, especially because you may not have experience, real work experience in artificial intelligence. You may have it in IT, but not in AI. So HR is not going to like that. They're not going to let you go through. So you're going to use LinkedIn. When you find the job opening online, you're actually going to use LinkedIn to find the right people there in the company and then reach out to them. Do a networking process so that you can actually get referrals, get referred to the hiring managers directly. That way you actually don't have to go through HR and there's a specific process, a way that you actually do it. So that's why LinkedIn, everything begins and ends with LinkedIn and it's extremely important that you master that component. Now, the next component that you want to master is AI business fundamentals because think about it. If you're not going to be writing code on a day-to-day -day basis, if your team will be doing that, other team members, then what are you going to be doing? How, what value are you going to bring to the, to the business, to the organization? And you have, broadly speaking, these are the things that you have to keep in mind. So the first is developing the skill of creating AI strategies. You know, business strategies from a, from a business perspective, an organization is adopting artificial intelligence. They see some value there and they need not only the implementation, the machine learning engineers or, or the data scientists, they actually need strategists, right? Like product managers that have that, you know, the vision for the product or just people that are able to see the business strategy, you know, what is the value for the, for the organization. And no, that's actually the other one, Being having that skill and that ability to assess the value that AI adoption will bring to the organization or a given use case, right? If you select a given use case and your team go ahead and goes ahead and implements that use case, what is the value for the organization? It's extremely important. And you actually have to know what successful AI adoption looks like in the first place. So you need to know what are some common success criteria for AI projects and what are some common failure criteria. Why do most AI projects fail? Because the failure rate is pretty high right now. And if you know upfront what are the things that lead to success and what are the things that lead to failure, you are going to have a huge advantage and you'll be able to add a ton of value to your team and to your overall organization. So, and now, based on the business value, you also want to be able to measure the return on investment, the ROI. So let's say that your company, you know, they hire you and, and you create a proposal, right? That's, that's another one. You have to be able to create proposals for AI adoption, for adopting use cases. And let's say you estimate that you're going to need, your team is going to need $5 million, let's say. What is the return on investment? How much is you know, the company or the company's client going to get back out of that $5 million investment. And you usually want to think and think in terms of 10 X, 10 times more. So if you invest $5 million into AI, you want to have an idea, at least over the next five years, how you're going to get $50 million back. You want to, you know, start there with a tangible value. And then you also want to measure, keep track of the intangible value as well, because AI sometimes also increases customer satisfaction if you make a process better or you automate customer service or things like that, for example. So there's an intangible value as well that is part of it, but you also want to focus more importantly on the tangible value for the organization annualized over time. So extremely important that you have these skills. And very importantly as well is managing risk because most AI projects fail and there's a number of reasons why they fail and you have to know what are those reasons. That's part of knowing what are the 
success and failure criteria for AI projects, but you want to know how to manage that risk, how to anticipate it up front, know what are the, the pitfalls, what are the problems, and then how do you hedge for that? How do you anticipate that risk and, pre and prevent failure for the project? And by the way, you actually need to implement uh, like an uh, agile or scrum methodology or lean methodology where you can iterate quickly, learn from mistakes and improve until you converge on the true business value. So this is not a solution in, when it comes to AI, it's not a solution that you find on the first go. It's an iterative process and you have to be open to that and, and be able to maximize your chances. So managing risk, we already covered creating proposals. Uh, let's say that you get hired as a machine learning product manager. Typically you will not be required to write code in you know, most of these roles, but a very important part of your role is creating AI adoption proposals, proposals for adopting a use case, and you have to be able to create proposals, know what makes a successful proposal and the different components of it, and being able to manage the stakeholders and present it and communicate. So there's a lot of things that you, that you need to know when it comes to creating proposals for, for AI adoption specifically. And the last one, very importantly, you're going to be the leader of the team. Let's say that you're the machine learning product manager. You are going to be leading a team of potentially data scientists, machine learning engineers, software engineers, QA, you know, testers, engineers, analysts, designers. So you need to be able to lead the AI or machine learning team as well and be, be that leader you know, for the organization, for the product and for, for your team members. So that's an extreme leadership. It's also an extremely important component that you bring to the table. And again, none of these things are coding, right? You don't, you're not writing code for any of these things, but that is why this is a focus on the business. This is a role that is more focused on the business, but from the leading the team, you can see that you're at that intersection. So you're working with the business users, but you're also working with your technical team to overall increase the value of the organization through AI adoption. So that's the second component that you need to master, AI business fundamentals. Now the last thing, the third thing that you need to master is the interview process because you can, you can learn all of these things and that's fantastic, but you need a job offer, you need to get the job, you need to get hired, get into the field of AI, take your career to the next level. So we already covered LinkedIn is one of those things that you need to master and that's part of the interview process because like we, we covered, you are going to get referrals to the hiring managers. You're going to use LinkedIn in multiple ways. So LinkedIn is a crucial part of the interview process itself. Now, you also want to prepare, obviously, for any interview you want to prepare, you want to understand the company that you're applying, that you want to get the job for, you know, where are they in their AI adoption journey, you know, what are their successes, their failures, so there's a lot of the things that you can do to prepare before the interview, and then you also want to have questions prepared for when you actually come to the interview, and I'm not, I'm not talking questions like, oh, what is the salary, what is the compensation, what will I be doing on a day-to-day -day basis, no, 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 those are shallow, selfish questions, you want to ask powerful, important questions. Like for example, where do you see the company going in, in terms of artificial intelligence within the next five years? Something that, that's an example of an important question that tells you about the future of the company, where they see themselves in the future. So there are very specific questions that you want to ask that are important, that are about them because the interview process is not about you at all. It's about them, it's about the, the value that you bring to the organization. So that's what you wanna focus on. And you also need to anticipate what are the questions that they will ask you? So you need to prepare for the interview from that test. They will ask you questions about AI, about business, about product management, for example. So you need to be ready to answer those questions as well and be ready and be competent. And the interview process itself is almost like a consulting process where you're asking questions, you're getting information and you're uncovering their needs and where they want to be in the future. So you want to, when you come into the interview, you want to think like a consultant. You don't want to think of some, someone that just wants a job that just, you know, wants to make more money, who's just doesn't like their current job and they're just looking for a better job. No, no, no. You want to think of, as a, of yourself as a world-class consultant that is coming here to change the company for the better through AI adoption and be that leader. And you want to add value throughout the interview process. So the, the fact that you're asking questions and you may even ask them about an AI project that failed, right? And ask them, why do you think it failed? And, and ask further questions about that. You can maybe even offer a solution. Right there during the interview process, you may be able to identify why that AI project failed and provide a solution or some kind of advice for them not to make those mistakes again and be successful in the future. So you don't have an offer at this point, it's still the interview process, and yet you're adding so much value that, you know, think about it from the perspective of the hiring manager or whoever's interviewing you, this person is adding so much value, like that's amazing. We never interview anyone that does, that, in, that does it this way. So that's why you want to be different and that's why the interview process is extremely important because what matters the most at the end of the day is getting that job offer, getting hired, and working full-time in artificial intelligence as a leader 
without having to write code on a day-to-day -day basis. And the last one for the interview process, handling objections. Well, what does that mean? Let's say someone says, well, we just don't think that you have enough work, work experience or you have no work experience in artificial intelligence. I mean, you may have it in IT, but you don't have it in artificial intelligence. So what do you do in that case? There's a way that you can turn objections from the hiring managers into commitments and for them to say, oh, actually, that is even a strength. I want to hire you. So, and there's a specific interview process that you want to go through that actually leads to getting those job offers, the most important thing. So really, again, those are the three things that you need to master if you want to make a career transition from where you are in IT. You may be you know, an, an IT product manager, for example, or a project manager, or even a business analyst, and you want to make this shift, get into AI, let's say for a machine learning product manager role. You don't want to be writing code. That's not your strong suit. So you need to master LinkedIn, master AI business fundamentals, and you also ma need to master the interview process so that you actually have the job offer so you can actually be working in the field full time. So that's really why you need to make this career transition to artificial intelligence and, and get hired. So if you want to take your career to the next level by joining the growing field of artificial intelligence and get hired to work at the intersection of business and technical, but the coding itself is not your strong suit and you like the things that, that we cover here, this is something that you want to do. I created a, a free training for you. You know, click on the link below. I, I put the link there. And it's intended to help you make this career transition and get hired for these non-coding AI roles. Now, this is a great first step, getting this first role, get this first break into AI, a great first step towards either growing into an executive leadership role or starting your, your own AI company, your own AI consulting company or your, your own AI startup in the in the near future so this is a fantastic career it's growing there's unlimited opportunity and you can be a part of it right now early while when it's the easiest time to get into the field and for the first time you can get into the field without having to write any code so go ahead click on the link watch my free training and and i'll help you make this career transition to artificial intelligence from where you are right now and any questions or thoughts comment below and i will see you next time